All right, you know what it is, man. This one is about the Sereno versus the D.C. car versus the New York car versus the Philly car versus the Baltimore car. The whole East Coast had to get involved in this joint. So sit back, man. You're going to really enjoy this ride. And you know me. I like to take my ride, man. All right. I'm sitting here, I'm getting ready to tell you about the Sereno car, man. How vicious it get in the joint. So if the youngest want to get involved, you know what I mean? If you're trying to get out of it, my number's on the screen. 347-207-5360. I answer my calls. Just so y'all understand. Alright? Now, we out in Lum Park, California, about 2000. You know? So now I'm going to tell you how this thing played out. Now, we out in Lump Park, and there's a kite sent from ADX. You know, this is 2000. I left ADX in 1999. You know what I mean? So, a year after I'm out, I get to uh, 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 Allenwood, Cal uh, Pennsylvania, and I stayed there about, you know what I mean? A, a little time, a little over a year, you know, maybe two years. You know what I mean? 18 months or whatever. But by... 2000, it was a big riot in Lumpark. It was with the Sereno and the DC car, but the whole East Coast car got involved because that's how we move when we out West. So y'all understand when y'all listen to this, if somebody get into it from the East Coast, you know, with someone from the West Coast, everyone have to get involved. Whether you mess with that person or not, whether they are homie or not, because it's an East Coast thing. You understand? Just like if something happened with the white guys, the Aryan Brotherhood, uh, the Serenos, the Border Brothers, the Paisas, whoever, you know, the East Coast got to get involved or the blacks got to get involved. Now, when it's with another race, even the California gangs get involved and merge with the East Coast car, even if it's an East Coast beef, as long as it's a black person against another race, this is the politics when they put us all in the same jungle, in this concrete jungle. You understand? So I'm giving y'all what you can't get nowhere else, period. Now, let me ride out. But before I go, I got a big birthday uh, celebration at Salsa Con Fuego. Sunday from 5 to about 12 o'clock. Make sure you show up early if you're trying to reserve bottles of rosé. It's $275 for a bottle of rosé in advance. It's going to be about $350, maybe $400 when you get in the joint. But that bottle, if you get it in advance, it'll get you in the door with one other guest for that $275. This is a real big nigga party. All right? Big shout out to the big niggas. Big shout out to the big niggas. If you ain't got enough for a bottle, you're not drinking a bottle, then go to the door and pay at the door. It's going to start at $30. It's going to probably run up to about $100, depending on how crowded it is. So, you know, it is what it is. We got Funk Master Flex, Ja Rule, and another female there. No disrespect to her. I don't have her name in my head because I've been gone a minute. But let me get to my story. You know, Cash App on the screen. It must have a little green... You know, check a box like on the side for you to know it's mine. Ignore the picture of me. That's not me with the picture in the cash app. It'll say dollar sign unique make a haul. Then it'll show Waynesworth Hall. But it must have a little green box on the side that has the thing. And I get my cash app. So let's get that flowing. Keep this movement going. Now, we out in uh, Lump Park, California. And... The Serenos get a kite from the black hand from ADX. I just left ADX in uh, 99, about a year, 18 months prior with uh, Champ. You know, you, the, 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 the brothers from out west, the Serenos and things like that, they know who Champ is. Champ is one of the founding fathers 
of the California MA. They had got into it um, back in the 90s. And I'm going to have to tell you that story. Remind me to tell you all about that. The California MA got into it with the Texas MA. If y'all saw that movie, I think it was called America Me, where at the end they transferred all the, you know, um, the, 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 the MA from California all over the country to Texas, Seattle, Washington, and, you know, everywhere. And they said they was just going to make their movement stronger. That's what it did. So when it got out to Texas, you know, my man, Lil Herbie, was out there and he started the uh, Texas Emmy and the California Emmy and them got in a beef because, you know, of course, certain brothers felt like they wasn't really Emmy because they wasn't really from California. And that started a blood war with murder, straight murder. Like I said, I was in the trenches with this. That's why I don't like these trolls. I can't stand a troll and a rat. Let's get that straight. Now, when I interview somebody on my channel, so you understand, I'm a journalist, but I'm a different type of journalist. I'm going to give a rat a voice. You understand what I'm saying? Because the code and conduct supersedes the voice of the rat. But I'm going to let you hear a rat trying to wiggle his way through the maze of the code. But that don't mean I agree with the rat, I side with the rat, or I'm the rat's homie. Because I'm no rat's homies. Let's get that straight. That's not no shock to nobody. You know what I mean? If a dude told he's a rat, he's a snitch, he's a whatever, that's him. You understand? I spend my money at local stores with dudes that's rats. Meaning the white people, the Arabs, and everybody else knowing if somebody run up in there, they're going to tell. They're not going to pull their shotgun out and hide in their business so they a rat. You understand what I'm saying? But I spend my money with them. But that don't mean I like them and that don't mean I agree with them. So if I bring somebody on the show that you know ain't right, that don't mean I agree with them. Let's get that straight. That just means I'm a journalist and I don't have to suppress their voice because the code and conduct supersedes their voice. To the men that know what the true laws is of this street game. And that's what I represent. Big shout out to Anton White, D.C. Big shout out to Lou Sims, New York. Big shout out to No Limit, D.C. Big shout out to Ferris, New York. Big shout out to E.R. Big shout out to uh, the, 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 the Kevin Childs, Peter Shue and all the other stand-up men that handled it the way it was supposed to be handled. Now, I'm just riding, so just let me ride, man. Sit back. You ain't been where I've been, so you can't tell me how to ride. But what you can do, and you're invited to do, is if you want to change the channel because you don't like the ride, you're welcome. You come back when you feel the ride is suitable for you to get in Unique's whip, period. Now, do we have that understanding? Gunshots. <laughs> okay. Now, so we out west, and the Serenos get a kite from the black hand that they had to hit a D.C. dude. Something happened in another joint in the black hand. Black hand, so y'all understand. I'm going to have to really break that down, but I'm going to bring one of my Serenos up here to break that down. So it's not just me speaking so you understand. Because like I said, anything that come out my mouth, challenge it. You're welcome to challenge it. I speak facts because I lived it. It was in Better than me. Not one of these dudes come up here and watch two YouTube videos, watch a unique make a video and try and break it down and twist it like if they're going to give a story now about something unique said. That's not factual. You come here, you get factual. Cop the book of Roar in Harlem. It's on the screen at AuroraInHarlem.com. The same title as the book you're looking at. Dot com is where you get the book, the audio book, the merch, and whatever you want to say to me. Now, they get a kite from the black hand. The black hand is superior to all the Mexican gangs. Let's get that straight. That's not even disputed. So they get a kite from a black hand. When they get a kite from a black hand, they must move out on it. Like me that I'm riding, I'm going to give you an idea how serious these kites are <clears throat> and how serious the black hand is. I'm in Lump Park about 2001. I'm in a hole. Now, they had a, a little... Uh, 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 
uh, uh, it was a California Emmy, and he was in, it was a young boy. He was in the cell with a Texas Emmy. And they was getting along good. You can hear them yelling through the car, bars, throwing the wheeler. They, you know, they getting their tobacco. They getting their weed. They bidding. They getting their magazines sent from different people. They bidding together. California and Texas, I mean, was bidding together. You would swear they was like this and they knew each other from the street. But then now a kite come when they find out that the dude that was in the cell with the little young California Emmy, that it was a Texas Emmy, and they told him he had to take his celly out. So if you youngies listening to this want to get involved in this, feel free to do it. I, I, I can't stop you. But I'm telling you, don't get involved in it. I just bring it raw, real, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Yeah, don't get involved, don't get involved, please don't get involved. No, do what you want to do. Because you're your own man. But Unique is telling you the consequences and repercussions to doing what you want to do. Now, the young California M.A. in the cell, uh, uh, Serena on the cell, and he gets a kite from one of the big uh, uh, M.A.s, uh, the black hand, and they tell him straight up, yo, that dude from Texas, we beefing with him. You got to get him out the cell. You know what I mean? These dudes was yelling, partying, doing everything together. You could hear them. I'm all the way on the third floor. They on the first floor and they bidding. Cause they separate us by floors. You understand what I'm saying? They got the black, uh, the, the, the Serenos on the first floor. You know what I mean? They, they got the Bloods and Crips on the second floor. And they got the East Coast on the third floor. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm listening to them from the third floor. They bidding. Sometimes I just lay back and don't say nothing and just close my eyes and I listen to the conversation of the tear. That's how I know these stories so well. And they bidding together and first they're laughing and joking and then when this can't come, all you hear is a man screaming for his life. Two, three o'clock in the morning because his celly got his forearm around his neck and he's choking him out. Trying to take his life because he got a kite. Then his set was beefing with the set of his celly after him and his celly was living together as brothers, as one. But he got a kite from the big homies. And when you get a kite from the big homies, just like a torpedo, when you shoot a torpedo, it don't care if it hit women, children, innocent bystanders, whoever, the torpedo hits its target and everything is a casualty of war. Now, I'm telling you, you know what I mean? Like I said, I'm riding. Let me ride, man. Let me ride. Hold up. Big shout out to me riding. Big shout out to me riding. Let me say this early, right? But first, I'm going to give a shout out to my man, RJ and Parlor Club. I did not forget you with the 50 cent story. Please bear with me. It's going to be fire. Now, let me explain to you how this thing works. You understand? Because I don't, I, I, I don't really think y'all really understand this. Now, you get a kite from the homie saying that you got to take out your celly. You don't have a voice to say, but me and my celly is cool. Uh, you know, you know the famous lie, but I love him, dog. That's my homie. You know, no, he can't be your homie if he's not from your set. And that's why I'm going to say this early. I'm going to, because I'm pissed off, I'm going to. So I'm letting you know now, I just got to get my head right so I don't get too emotional. Because like I said, men don't run off emotions. We run off instinct and desire to survive and help each other motivate and elevate to the next level. When women work off feelings and emotions, and that's why they crash. So women get mad all you want. I'm just telling you like it is. <laughs> all right. Now, right. So. I'm going to be breaking down that video that that European did, because I'm not going to disrespect him, that that European did on King Vaughn labeling him a serial killer. You know what I mean? But I'm angry right now. I'm emotional right now, which I'm not supposed to be behind that video. I don't like that video. I love the content. 
I love the history. I love everything that man gave in that video. I'll even suggest you go watch the King Vaughn serial killer video. But I don't like his assessment and breakdown of King Vaughn or the gangs or the street that I was raised in. I'm pissed off behind his assessment. And I feel, and this is my opinion. I'm talking psychology talk now. This is my opinion. I feel that these, these people, whatever color or race, that these people, I don't care if they're black, white, Chinese, Hungarian, B -B Bavarian, whatever. You know what I mean? Stay out of our street business in this United States of America. Because we got our codes you don't understand. We got our rules, our morals, our conduct, and our principles that you would never understand. And that's why you can make a stupid statement like King Vaughn was a serial killer. I'm angry behind that. I'm disappointed behind that. But what do you expect from a European that haven't walked in our shoes, that haven't lived in our concrete jungles of this United States to understand the rules of it? So I'm not angry at him. I'm just angry at what he said. Because certain things you're supposed to zip it. I'm going to get to that King Vaughn joint. If y'all want that, put that in the comments, man. Put that in the, in, give me an emoji and put that in the comments if y'all want why I'm pissed off about this European voice and his opinion on a gangster like King Vaughn. You understand what I'm saying? And I don't pick sides. I don't, I, I don't get involved in all that because, you know, GDs, BDs, all that, they all young men and they're following the rules of the conduct and code of their organizations and that's what these Europeans have to understand so you can't label a man in a whole nother lifestyle that you still haven't psychologically began or understood to process you understand I don't pick sides you understand? I'm all the way from New York. That's why I'm, I, I'm waiting till I put it up because I don't want nobody to take it out of context because you know these fake-ass, dick-riding trolls, they look for anything to say, but I can speak about the codes, the conduct, and principles of the street just like the drugs is a part of the street, the scamming is a part of the street, the prostitution is a part of the street, the pimping is a part of the street, the carjacking is a part of the street, and so is the gang-banging, and that's what I'm specialize in because that's what I was raised in and that's how I move you know what I mean I'm not in that no more let's say that straight but when I see false narrative about the street that I gave 26 years of my life and my freedom for it hurts me to the core but anyway let me get back to this thing because as a matter of fact hold on I gotta put some music on because I'm pissed off man you know? This Serrano story, but that's about the King Von John. If y'all want to put it up there, if you want to hear my opinion of it, if you want to keep hearing these fake, fake, gazy ass, not involved in the street, don't know our codes and conduct and principles and morals and honor of the street, keep listening to it and I'll keep my mouth shut because I stay in my lane like I'm asking them to stay in their lane and leave this stuff alone. Report the history of King Vaughn. He did a great job with the history of King Vaughn because I learned a lot. If y'all from Chicago, the young brothers out there know, y'all feel that, you know, he had the history wrong, please school me because I'm learning from his video. So I don't want to learn the wrong fake narrative of the history 
of the Chicago gangbanging. So if any one of y'all from Chicago out there, my number's on the screen. Get ready to come up. 347-207-5360. Please call me and school me. I want to hear from you, not these YouTubers. I don't even watch this YouTube. But a lot of people was telling me to watch that video, so I watched it, you know. But now let's ride back to this Sereno thing. So they get a kite from the black hand. You see how I ride? This is how I ride, man, because you're dealing with an old scholar. You know what I mean? I'm like your, I'm like your street historical uh, professor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, uh, they get a kite from ADX saying they had to hit a DC dude. So when they get the kite from the ADX to show you how dirty and cruddy it is in the prison system, how it's a cesspool in the prison system, and you got all types of scumbags in the prison system. They get a kite that they had to hit a DC dude. Now, being that, you know, um, we getting drugs and we doing our thing, and drugs control everything, whether you're in prison, on the street, the moon, Pluto, whatever. When people get drug-induced, they do anything for the drugs, and the drugs become their god. Their allegiance is to the drugs. So being that their allegiance was to the drugs, we had the drugs. One of the Serenos, yes, no disrespect to the Serenos, because you know we got rat bastards in the East Coast car. The same as you got rat bastards in the West Coast car. So I'm just keeping it 100. I'm giving facts to the youth for them to understand how this thing go. One of these lowlifes that was, you know, addicted to the drugs, they came to us and they told us that there was a kite sent and they was planning a big hit on the DC car. <laughs> you know what I mean? We broke them off with a couple of papers, you know, Heron, they went and did their thing, got good and high, and they felt like, you know, they accomplished their mission because they got their God in their system, which is the drugs. But that put us on point. You understand what I'm saying? So now, we all out in the yard. You know, this is how we ride. We all out in the yard, and we working out, D.C. working out, Baltimore working out, Philly working out, you know, New Jersey working out, Virginia working out, you know what I mean? Boston, we all out there working out, and it's an East Coast thing, but we all not really running together, but we did for each other, but we got our little pockets of every crew and car that I just mentioned that's working out together. But all of us is on point that the Serenos is getting ready to bring a Morano, which means black when I park to the, when I point to the back of my hand. That's why I say my cash app is on the screen. Make sure it's a little green, you know, checkered box next to my name, Waynesworth Hall, because they duplicated Way, uh, Waynesworth Hall and Unique Maker Audio, but they can't duplicate that checkered box yet that I know. So they didn't, so I could get my cash app. Send the cash app for this game, because these jewels is to be sold, not told. Now, we all out there working out, and the Serenos decide to make a move on a D.C. car, you know, because they got a kite saying they just had to hit anything from D.C. So it don't matter if you're from southeast, northwest, northeast, you understand what I'm saying? It, it don't matter where you from in D.C., there was a hit on your blood. That's how it works in the prison, because it came from the upper hand, which was the black hand, down to the Serenos. And at this time, they didn't even put black hands on the compound in the, 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 the penitentiaries. They tried not to put black hands on the compound, because when a black hand hit the compound, they run the whole car for the Mexicans. So they don't want no one man having control over that many people. So when the kite came and... They decided to make their move. Like I said, we was tipped off by somebody that was addicted to the god of the narcotics. That it was a move. So we all had our knives out there and everybody was ready. Because we're not going to let no Mexican or white guys, European guys, whatever labels you want to put on it for the trolls that want to say that I'm saying white boys. You know, when they have... A car called the Dirty White Boys. So how could I be wrong for saying the white boys? But this is how YouTube has turned. That they just grab anything to discredit a legend. But I know my loyal subscribers, you know, don't play into that. Oh, yeah. And I want to say a round of applause 
and thank you to my 50,000, yes, I hit 50,000 subscribers. All right, all right, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Thank you all. I'm at 50,000 subscribers from y'all that want this good game in the cash app on the screen. Got to be a green checking box to the right. Now, so you understand, if there's a picture of me on the cash app, it's not me. I don't use a picture on the cash app. They even duplicated my picture. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I ain't the most handsome dude, but I think I'm fly enough. You know what y'all say? Nowadays, I'm crunk. I'm litty. And you know what I mean? But this is what it is. So they get the kite. We in the yard and here go the Serenos. They decide to move on a DC car. But they think of the DC car sleep with the whole East car woke up and we ready to roll with the DC car. So when the Serenos went to move, everybody backed out and it was a bloodbath out there in that yard in Lump Park. It was a bloodbath. You know what I mean? We was already prepared they wasn't prepared, so they figured they could just send a couple of soldiers, you know, or what they call in the prison torpedoes. Torpedoes is someone that just go on a dummy mission. So they figured they could send a couple of torpedoes to go hit a DC dude and they handled their business of representing what they said they was going to represent, you know, from the kite that was sent by the black hand. But when they came, it was real ugly. It was real ugly. But of course, the other Serenos got involved and balanced it out, and you got the whole D.C. I'm talking about New York, Philly, you know, Boston, you know, uh, Jersey, you, you know what I mean? Uh, Virginia, you know, e e even the Dirty South got down with us. Even the Dirty South got down with us. Everything from the East represented because it was a race war. And this is how it is. That's why I said don't go to prison so you ain't got to deal with it. It was a race war. You understand? Things got all the way out of control. So all kinds of people got stabbed up, you know, airlifted to the hospital. It was real ugly. They locked the prison down for 90 days and 90 nights. I got to break down what they do during the lockdown, how they decide when and how they should open up when it's safe for the other inmates. Right, So if you want that, put that in there. But they locked us down for 90 days and did what they call investigation. I mean, they pulled everybody out the cell one at a time, two cellies at a time, you know, um, and asked them if it's safe to open up. Do they think anything going to happen if they open up? Did they hear anything? So now they got the cellies, you know, separated, but in a room talking to administration known as the SIS, Special Investigation Services. You understand? And they figure that one-on-one -on -one a nigga gonna tell because the nigga don't want no problems and want the jail to go back to normal because he really didn't have nothing to do with it, but he got pulled in it because he was black or he was from the East Coast or he was Sereno or he was Border Brother that rolled with the Serenos or he's a white boy. Because the white boys roll with the Serenos out there. The white boys roll with the Mexicans. It's just blacks against blacks and everything against black when you go into the federal system. So this is how it is. So they're looking for rat bastards in the back that's going to talk one-on-one because -on -one there's nobody around them. So after they do that for 90 days, they figure they got enough information. They transfer who they need to transfer and they locked up who they need to lock up. Then they tried to open the joint back up. Now, when they open the joint back up, they got the main people that was fighting from all sections, east and west. You know, cause even the Bloods and Crips got down with us. The GDs got down with us. The Black Gorilla family got down with us. You know what I mean? Black uh, Junior Black Mafia got down with us from Philly. Jersey got down with the D.C. move. So that's what I'm saying. We homies based on our code and conduct that we're not rat bastards. That's how it works in the prison. If you're a rat, you're punished. You got 30 days to get your paperwork to show you're not a rat. In 30 days, if your paperwork don't come, or if paperwork come from another prison showing you a rat, you're going to get airlifted out of there and may not make it home to your loved ones. So we tell you, you got 30 days to leave on your own if you're a rat. But if we find out you're a rat, this is what it's going to be. These are the rules in prison. I'm not making them up. I'm just telling you what they are to hopefully deteriorate. You know what I mean? The youngins from want to go to prison because they all say, if I get caught, I'm telling them this and that. No, ain't no telling on no dead bodies, no live bodies, no telling on nothing, man. Because when you got that on your jacket, you become prey. Or as they say in the gang world, you become food. 
Just so you understand. So they open the joint back up. So when they open the joint back up, we all uh, go to go to the kitchen one unit at a time. Then they fiddle it in, man. You know, and let the, the you know the whole prison go. By the time the whole prison go, we got you know official official Baltimore dudes and Philly dudes and New York dudes. You know what I mean? And East Coast dudes that you know run with DC. Or should I say? Respect and represent DC because we're all from the same code, conduct, and deal with the same morals and principles and honor. That is death before dishonor of telling on your comrade. If you tell on your comrade, the honorable thing to do is to fall on your sword. If not, continue to live a rat bastard life. And that's how it is. I'm just giving it to you raw. You know what I mean? Not tell nobody to go kill himself or nothing like that. So let's get that straight. You know what I mean? But this is what it is. So now we all in the joint. And we had a fish of Baltimore dude there. Big shout out to my man Mookie, man. <laughs> Big shout out to Mookie, man. Big shout out to Mookie. Big shout out to Mookie, black from the JR Junior, uh, uh, Black Junior Mafia. Big shout out to black from New York. You know what I mean? We got official dudes, man, from the East Coast. But they was like, man, screw that crap, man. Too much tension in the air. You know what I mean? Let's not wait for these, you know, uh, 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 we just gonna say no disrespect because we didn't separate them. Let's not wait for these Mexicans to move on us. We didn't, say we didn't wait on the Serenos. Let's not wait on these Mexicans to move on us because the Mexicans and the white guys and all the different Mexican gangs, they come together as one. So it don't matter if you're a border brother or Sereno, you know what I mean, or none of that. You know what I mean? Or Aryan Brotherhood, they moving against the blacks. And this is what it is. So Mookie was like, man, let's set it off. So the best place to set it off for it to be contained and catch your ops, you know what I mean? In the best situation, you know, is in the child hall. Everybody know if you do something in the child hall, you automatically get transferred. Because in the child hall, you got the captain, the warden, the AW, the unit manager, the SIS, the psychology, unit team. Everybody who's anybody in the top echelon in the prison administration is in there. So if you fight in there, you get transferred. No questions asked. Fight anywhere else you good to come back to the compound. But on the strength of that, nobody take knives. You know what I mean? I ain't gonna say nobody, but not many people take knives to the mess hall because they know the mess hall is neutral. So you'll send your homie to the yard and they'll go to the yard and they'll bring the knives. So after you eat, you go to the yard and then you get your knife, but you don't bring your knife in the mess hall. But Big Mookie from Baltimore said, nah, let's take our knife to the mess hall. They, we outnumbered. We out here in the West, so we have to move on them before we move on them. And that's why I said, if you want me to break down that King Vaughn, you know, this fake European, you know what I mean? This fake European labeling King Vaughn a serial killer and comparing him to Jeffrey Dahmer, I think, is the ultimate disrespect to every gang banner banger, including King Vaughn's ops. King Vaughn's comrades, anything gang banging, I think that's the ultimate disrespect to you, young man. You know, not saying I agree, you know, with what y'all are doing. You know what I mean? Because I understand you're doing, you know, what you was bred to do. Like I did what I was bred to do. I sold narcotics and I held it down. You know what I mean? And you was bred, you know, to run in the gangs. You know what I mean? So I don't know all the codes and me uh, mechanisms behind it. But I know that we all fall under the banner of honor, respect, morals, principles. You understand what I'm saying? And following the code of conduct that we don't tell and we get retribution for anyone that touch anything that falls under our banner. But this is what these Europeans and other YouTubers don't understand. And civilians that run around saying King Vaughn's a serial killer. Total violation in my book. That goes against the code and conduct that I lived and died for and gave 26 years for. For them to label that man a serial killer. If you want me to break down why, let me. 
You know what I mean? Put a comment or put the emoji. But I, I, I said I stay in my lane. You know what I mean? But if y'all want it, I'll give it to you. You know? And a lot of y'all gonna disagree with me. But that's because you're not from the street. You're not from this concrete jungle. Like Tupac said, a rose grow from the concrete. We all roses. Because we love each other. We love each other enough to kill for each other. Not saying it's right. You know what I mean? But just letting you know. So we do have a heart. We do have empathy. We do have compassion. But that's for each other. So if you want me to break that down, put the emoji in the cash app on the screen. You must have the little green checkered box next to it, next to my name. The picture with me on the cash app is not me. Period. Any picture. I don't use my picture on the cash app. Now, Mookie said let's set it off. So we all take our joints to the kitchen. So we go to the kitchen and next thing you know, you know, we all looked at each other and you know, the homies in the other units already know when you hear the deuces in the kitchen, the deuces mean the emergency siren. When you hear that in the kitchen, pop off. Wherever you at, pop off on anything named Mexican or white. Because it's them against us. And instead of us playing defense, let's play offense and we just go. Anything we do out here in Long Park when they transfer us, because they will transfer us for fighting in the kitchen with the administration... Anything we do, so you understand, we're getting closer yeast. Even if we just go to Colorado and we're from New York, we're closer to New York than all the way out of California. You see how this thing works? So we said, let's blow this joint, man. Gunshots. 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 You know, let's blow this joint. So we set it off and just got to fight. Everybody just got to fight and stabbing each other and... They was throwing juice machines and they had ice cream machines in there. They were throwing ice machines. We had knives taped all up under the counters, and, you know, for the for the salad bar and that hot bar. You see dudes all on their back pulling the knives, some under the thing that they done taped up with the with the duct tape up under the, the, the salad bar. And knives everywhere, man. But this is prison. That's why I say don't get involved, because this is how real this is. You know what I mean? So we in there and we terrorizing them. But we call them off guard because they're not bringing their knives to the kitchen like we normally don't bring ours. But we knew this was the only place to get the upper hand because out there it's like 800 to maybe 100 of us, if that. So only way to get the upper hand was to go where we knew they wasn't going to have their knives. You know what I mean? So they locked us down. You understand? So... For another two months, first of the three months, we came out, popped off in the kitchen, and then they locked us down for another three months, for another two months. So after two months, they shook out all the units. Of course, it was Mexican police out there. They rolled with the Mexican gangs. So they went all the East Coast car, the black cars, the Bloods and the Crips, the GDs, Black Gorilla family. You know what I mean? They went in all their cells and shook them down. And the Mexican cell, but they let they wasn't looking for nothing in their cell. They came in our cells and took our knives, man. They took our knives. The police disarmed us. Like I told you, Delroy Uzi did when he got to Atlanta and had the beef. Well, he felt like he wanted to move on to another Jamaican, so he borrowed everybody's knife, said he had a beef with a Yankee boy, and everybody gave him his knife. But now nobody got a knife, so when he went to punish the dude that he had the beef with, you know, his peoples that represented him didn't even have a knife to hold himself down, but Delroy don't borrow their knife. So that's how the SIS, you know, the Mexican uh, SIS did it out in California. They came and shook down the joint and took all of our knives, and then they let us all back on the compound. We ain't got no knives. All the Mexicans got the knives. You know, welcome to prison, man. Welcome to prison. Gunshots. Gunshots. All right? So this is what happened, right? So they let us out. We got no knives. So being that they had, like, the unicorn, the... You know, um, CMS, you know, it's like the work detail with the plumbers, the electricians, and we keep the upkeeping of the jail. They got razor blades and things like that and different things we can make knives out of. So they had plexiglass and all that. So we had to go get broken glass and wrap our towels and socks around it so it didn't cut the palm of our hand when we holding the, the you know, what we made for the grip and made the front pointy so we could put our work in. 
You understand what I'm saying? So we got broken glass. We got locks in sock, locks in our hands. We got broomsticks. We got everything. That's all we got. Because they took our knives and left the Mexicans and the white boys with their knives. And we got to defend ourselves all the way in California without our homemade knife. Y'all paying attention to this that I'm saying, man. Y'all paying attention. Man, I think... You know what? I think this made too much. Go to my Roku channel, man. My Roku channel and my podcast and Unique Make Audio, man. And, you know, I'm going to end it here. If you want the rest of this, put it on. I've been on here 40 minutes. I don't want to give y'all too much because you already know the old saying. Too much sunlight burn the plant. Too much uh, water drown the plant. I don't want to burn you and I don't want to drown you. I just want to school you and hopefully deteriorate you from going through this bull crap that I had to go through. But I'm sorry for leaving you in suspense, but I kind of like it. So we just gonna let it go from there. All right. Cheers. 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 C